Hello, my name is Taylor Willingham with the Willingham Law Firm here in McKinney, Texas, and I'm going to talk a little bit about contesting a will. So, you might uh, have a will that you would like to contest. Um, your father or mother wrote a will, leaving everything to your brother or sister, and you think something might be wrong with it. Or maybe you have a brother or sister, or you know, whatever the circumstance may be, you want to contest a will. Well, can you contest a will? Well, first of all, there's some procedural things you need to know. Uh, first is uh, there is a statute of limitations. Statute of limitations mean there's a time period you can bring the lawsuit in. In the state of Texas, you can only bring a lawsuit in within two years after the will has been probated. Now, there are three exceptions to this rule, um, but you need to see an attorney if you if you think you meet one of these exceptions. One, if you are a minor um, or uh, incapacitated. Uh, two, if there was some kind of fraud involved with the will. And uh, three, if uh, you actually find a will that was written later. So they wrote a will earlier in their life, that one was probated, and then you're digging through some files, and lo and behold, two weeks before he passed away, he wrote another will. And so you can bring that probate after, or that will to probate two years after the original, the first one was probated. Those are, that's one procedural issue that you're gonna have to look at, is, is the year, how long ago did this happen? Number two is, um, only interested parties can contest a will. So let's use the example of a brother. Uh, your brother, he wrote a will, and uh, you believe uh, he told you his whole life he was going to lead you, leave you the family farm. Um, instead, his will comes in and it says, everything to my spouse, and then not to my spouse, to my son. Um, even though you have heard this problem, promise your whole life, you cannot bring a contest because even if the will is contested and overturned, you still won't inherit. The property will pass to the son. Uh, if there's some way that you can show that you can receive the property through um, intestacy law, then you can bring the case. But in that situation, it's, it's kind of weird. You think a brother would have that opportunity, but he cannot. You have to be an interested party. You have to receive something if the will is no longer there, so through what we call intestacy laws. Um, the next are, what grounds can you, can you uh, bring a suit against a will? So you want to sue um, because you don't think you got what, what you deserve, but you think there was some, something going on that caused you not to receive what you should have received. Uh, so we call these grounds of contest, or for contested, contesting a will. Now the first ground is lack of capacity. So um, the, your father or your mother didn't have the capacity, mental capacity, to actually distribute the proper properly. Uh, there are a few things that we look at. One, uh, they understand the nature of the act uh, that the, uh, he or she was doing. Uh, did they understand that? Did they understand what they were doing when they wrote the will? Uh, or did they think that they were writing up a contract to play with the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, if, if that's the case, then um, you have a good lack of capacity argument. Uh, number two, did they know the nature and character of their property? So did they understand that they owned a million, million dollar piece of property in uh, down in Houston and that they gave that piece of property to um, their long lost best friend. Uh, they thought maybe your dad or mom thought the property was a little $2,000 piece of property. Didn't realize it was a million dollar piece of property. Now, that's different than let's say they, they, they thought legitimately that it was worth $2,000, but it turns out it was worth 1 million. Well, that's totally different. This is if they should have known that it was worth a million, but they thought it was worth $2,000. Uh, uh, they know the objects of his or her bounty, meaning they know who should get the property. They know their their uh, sons and their daughters. You know, a lot of people, as they get Alzheimer's, they don't know that they have a certain son or a certain daughter. At that point, they lack the capacity to write a will. Um, and then last, they under, understand the, the disposition that they are making. They understand that, that this is a document that when they pass away, it's going to distribute their property. Um, that's lack of capacity. Now, the next one we have is undue influence. And this is the one that probably causes the most conflict. 
um, it's important to know that mere opportunity uh, to cause some undue influence is not undue influence. So let's say brother Buck lives at the house with mom and is always harassing mom and always telling mom to do this and to, to do that. Just because he had the opportunity to do it, he was the one in charge, doesn't mean there was undue influence. Um, you actually have to show that he was forcing her to do a certain thing. Um, uh, another thing is, is you can't leave property to your attorney. So even though how lovely we are when you walk into our office and and sometimes it happens where an uh, older uh, man or woman doesn't have anybody to leave property to and the only person that's talked to them in two or three years is the attorney that they're now paying to draft up their will. And so they decide, well, I might as well leave the property to you. Well, they can't, you can't leave property to your attorney. So let's say, I mean, there, there are situations. There is a situation with a man who raised a, young, uh, who raised a, a, a boy and um, he never adopted him, but he was always over at his house. He was an attorney and the kid later on in life came to him and said, hey, I would like to leave my, these very important things to you because I know that you'll take care of these things. Um, so he, this attorney drafted the will, you know, considering the boy his own son, but wasn't in all, it, it, legally was not his son. And so at the end of the day, the, the will was void because, or that gift was void because uh, the attorney cannot do that. So you can't leave property to your attorney. I know there's not very many of you that were ever considering that. Um, the next is fraud. Has some kind of fraud been committed? Uh, so, you know, they handed a document telling them, oh, this is just, um, you're just giving some property to somebody, this is a contract, and lo and behold, it turns out to be a will, leaving all the property to this person who they don't even know. You know, that's fraud. And so uh, that uh, will will not be upheld, and so you can bring that claim of fraud. Uh, another one is mistake. A mistake was made. Um, uh, they thought they were doing something totally different. Uh, they didn't understand, so they were handwriting their own will, and they didn't really understand that what they were doing was making a disposition of their property upon their death. Um, last is, uh, did the testator know the contents of the will? Uh, so let's. This is going to be a big issue among, uh, especially the Hispanic community. Uh, did they, were they able to read English? If they can't read English, well, how did they know what was in the will that was being written for them? Did someone read to them in their own language explaining what was going on? Uh, if someone has done this, then uh, then the property uh, can then there is no contest that can be had. But if no one told the person what they were doing, then you can bring a grounds for contesting the will that the parent or the brother or sister or whoever it is did not know what they were doing. Um, so these are some of the reasons you can contest a will. Now there are more out there, uh, but these are the main ones. So uh, if you have one of these or maybe I didn't mention something, please go see an attorney and just see if you have an opportunity to, to bring a contest. My name is Taylor Willingham. If you have any questions, you're always free to email me at taylor at taylorwillingham.com. Or you can call me at 214-250-4407. Thanks and goodbye.